Let's get to the latest on the CGI harassment case. Uh, the SC former staffer who is a complainant in this case has now written to the Supreme Court's in-house probe committee seeking a copy of their report. Remember, yesterday the panel issued statements saying uh, that they have finished the process and they did not find any merit in the allegations that had been made by the former staffer against Chief Justice of India, Ranjan Gokoi. Let's go across to Minakshi for more on this. Minakshi, uh, we understand that she has sought a copy of this probe report. What's the legal procedure here? Of course, uh, the committee has said they won't make it public, but can the complainant access it? Minakshi? Uh, absolutely right. Uh, this is a two-page letter which uh, we are in the possession of, uh, where she is citing her purported right to know. Uh, because remember, this, uh, these are in-house proceedings which are governed by the Memorandum of Procedure, uh, which offers constitutional protection that we to the Honorable Chief Justice of India's office and whosoever the occupant of that office is. Now, uh, the complainant states that she finds it surprising that despite the material that she has submitted, uh, the in-house panel has found no substance, as was stated by Honorable Justice Gobde, by way of the statement which you are referring to. And she wishes to understand as to why there was no substance uh, that the in-house panel uh, has has zeroed in on. And in order uh, to be able uh, to understand it better, and also can be very importantly, this is an administrative order of the Supreme Court in-house panel, which, as we have showcased to our viewers, is governed by the Memorandum of Procedure, uh, which demands uh, the judges uh, in India, uh, because there's a constitutional protection uh, that is offered to them. But in order to challenge this administrative order in any other legal forum, in this particular instance, it will be the Delhi High Court, uh, which uh, will be the forum, if at all this becomes a subject matter of, of future challenge. In order to be able to do so, it is important for the complainant and our counsels to get a copy of this in-house panel report, which the in-house committee of the Supreme Court, headed by the second senior most judge of the Supreme Court, has already uh, held it to be confidential. So surely uh, we will be tracking and keeping a close eye on, on how this pans out in the foreseeable future. Yes, absolutely, Minakshi, because uh, like you said, uh, the fact is that uh, the in-house probe committee said that they will not be making this uh, report, their findings public, uh, but will the complainant get a copy of it so that she knows, uh, you know, where, uh, what they thought about this entire case. It will be interesting to see. Thanks so much for joining us uh, with that, uh, uh, you know, big uh, development that's taken place. Meanwhile, uh, today, a protest is now being held in Bengaluru, where women activists and some lawyers have also come out. Uh, and this is over this case and the way it has been handled. Earlier in the day, there was also a protest that was held outside the Supreme Court in the national capital. And few of those uh, activists who were protesting there were then also uh, detained and Section 144 in post because, of course, this is the Supreme Court we're talking about. Let's go across to Neha, though. She's joining us from Bengaluru. Neha, who are uh, these protesters and what are they saying? Absolutely. In fact, it seems that protests have erupted right from the afternoon itself. Of course, first it was in Delhi and now right here in the capital of Karnataka, Bengaluru as well. We have a lot of women, if you would just, you know, be able to see how they really gag their mouths with this black cloth, just signifying their protest that, you know, their, of course, uh, their angst, their anger against uh, this decision to give uh, Ranjan Gogoi a clean chit is what we're given to understand. You would be able to see how, of course, uh, a lot of women really have gathered. We're talking about activists. We're talking about daily wage workers. We're also talking about uh, women from various walks of life who seem to have, of course, been affected by this decision. In fact, if, if I can actually go over and talk to one of these uh, women, one of the activists as well, who's really, you know, sort of spearheaded this entire protest, I have with me uh, an activist, uh, Tara. Let's talk to her and find out what the women are really seeking from this protest and why is it that they really gathered here today. So if you could just go ahead and brief us, all of you have, you know, gagged your mouth. What is it that you're trying to seek from this protest? There is, of course, a lot of anger in a lot of women across the country. What is it that you are trying to seek from this? We think this is symbolic that justice itself has been gagged and certainly women's rights have been gagged. Um, we are proud to be in a democratic country with equal rights for women 
and the constitution has given that and the supreme court has repeatedly delivered very progressive verdicts right in the case of uh, you know women's rights whether it's abrimala whether it's section 370 uh, and we look to the supreme court to do the same in every case uh, that's our last item of hope and when we see that an ordinary woman uh, where there is a huge imbalance of power it's a workplace harassment issue which means that prevention of sexual harassment in the workplace should apply and we are all working women yeah. here right yeah. from various parts Absolutely. of uh, society and we've just spontaneously come because we see that this case right from the beginning uh, the posh uh, uh, act has not been followed by the uh, by a case that is under the national spotlight if this is what happens in a case that is you know where everybody is scrutinizing it that you don't have a three member committee with a woman leading it you don't have an external person um, the lady who is the complainant and she may be entirely wrong it's not a question of who's right or wrong it's not for us to judge yeah, at all course. what we are saying is that there must be due process a fair and impartial inquiry right and justice must not only be served it must perceived to be served only then people like us will have the faith and confidence in the supreme court she has not even been given a lawyer to represent herself imagine being a person who is not a lawyer and standing in front of the highest justices of the land supreme court justices and trying to forward your case that itself is so scary and intimidating right mm -hmm. and then you don't see the so, report so that are is you, are you hopeful now that you know possibly a change would come about we've seen protests of course now in delhi and in bengaluru too this could possibly continue over the coming days as well we would see protests erupting across the city all for the same cause are you hopeful of something changing I mean certainly we are very upset about this and we will because we've all come together spontaneously we don't have a day by day plan yet but hopefully at the end of this we'll have a chance to talk to each other and say how do we want to take this forward we certainly want to see things change we're not here for the fun of it it's a week day it's a working day right and everybody is left whatever it is they're doing and come from different parts of the city most people don't live here right so we really do care and want to see this fixed and we think it's unacceptable so we will be devising the plans moving forward and hope that just will be served for her it's a landmark case right right thank you sir all right so that is the sentiment that you're really gathering here from bengaluru of course and it seems like protests too would continue to erupt across the country is what we're given to understand but uh, whether now of course the supreme court really take note of the demands of the women that is something that remains to be seen Yes, and of course, uh, uh, apart from the fact that there are these women who've come out and are demanding the due process be followed, the due process itself has to be looked at and seen if legally there is, um, you know, any future further course of action and whether it depends on the complainant or on the judges of the Supreme Court. Thanks, Neha, for bringing us that update from Bengaluru.